Aslimer. My name is David Peterson, and this is the Art of Language Invention. Episode six: Bad Conlangs. I got an email the other day that kind of broke my heart a little bit. Basically, this person was creating a conlang, or is uh, about to create a conlang, and they said it ended up reminding them of a lot of what I did with my very first conlang, Meg Davy, which of course I've written a big long essay on for why it's really, really bad, and I think it is really, really bad. But then they asked me, does that mean they're creating a bad conlang? And that's really kind of a sad question. The answer, the short answer is definitely no. But let's tease that out a little bit and see what that means. As I said in my first video, the very first thing that you need to do when you're creating a language is to specify exactly why you're creating it, what the goals are, what you're doing with it, why it exists. I did not do that with my first language, Meg Davy. And so while it was extremely satisfying to create at the beginning, it ended up breaking down once I figured out exactly what I was doing. Now let me tell you exactly why that happened. First, let's get the easy stuff out of the way. Meg Davy was basically a personal language, or at least that's what it ended up being. It was not natural by any means. It was extremely regular, so it definitely was not a naturalistic art lang.、Um, but at the same time, it wasn't completely regular. There's there were some bizarre little idiosyncrasies to it, so it wouldn't have made a great ox lang. It definitely wasn't logical, so it was not a logical language. Um, and honestly, it probably wouldn't have made a great secret language because it was kind of easy to learn. I mean, it was definitely easier to learn than your average natural language, so it wouldn't have made a great secret language. So what that leaves is the personal language. That is a language that is created just for you, based on whatever it is you want. Here's why that ended up breaking down for Meg Davy. All right. As I started making Meg Davy, it was basically just making decisions based on what I wanted, and it was starting off really cool based on what I thought was really cool at the time. It was a language based on triconsonantal roots, which I had just just discovered with Arabic, and、um, and then I decided, oh, it would be really cool to make a language based on that. So I did.、Um, it had, you know, its phonetic inventory and what have you,、um, and among its、uh, early. Uh, phonetic elements was、uh, a series of affricates, specifically t, z, ch, and j, and that's fine. You see that in lots of languages, but at some point in time, I decided that it wasn't realistic to have those four sounds and to not have these additional sounds. That is p, z, b, z, p, z, b, z, k, z, g, z. Ksh and gj, all as phonemes, and I did that because I was looking at the Greek alphabet and I saw one letter for ksa and another letter for psa, and I thought, oh, well, geez, shoot, if I have all of these, I have to have all of these, which, first of all, is completely not true. The original set that I had is something that you wouldn't be surprised to find in a naturalistic language or in a conlang. The ones that I created. Totally unrealistic. So that was that was not true. But second and most important, I absolutely just did not like the way these things sounded. I hated them, especially the like sounds like gja and bja. They were just awful sounding to me. And yet I kept trying to use them because I had them. And I thought, well, if I have these、uh, phonemes, then I have to use them in my language. And so I started sprinkling them around everywhere, and the result was really, really unappealing. And of course, that's just one example. There are actually examples scattered throughout the language of places where I betrayed what I wanted to do with the language. Uh, one one early example. I was also taking Esperanto at the time. I was heavily influenced by Esperanto, so I basically borrowed in this、uh, system that Esperanto has, which I think is ridiculous and doesn't work. Where they have one suffix "ig" and the very similar looking, at least orthographically, suffix "ij." The first one takes a verb root and makes it transitive, and the second one takes a verb root and makes it intransitive in some way. And it's really kind of bizarre how that works. Like here we have. Uh, you know, minomas vin, which means like I name you, but then minomijas, which means I am called or I am named. So it's kind of like a passive, but it's not really a passive because Esperanto also has a passive. 
but it's also not just that. And then you have the uh, transitive suffix, which uh, acts like a causative sometimes, but not all the times when the verb root itself can be either just transitive or intransitive on its own. It's a, it's a real mess of a system. And I basically borrowed that whole thing into Meg Davy and just copied it. And I had exactly the same problems with it in Meg Davy that I have with the, that I had with it in Esperanto. And uh, honestly, I just really, really didn't like it. I thought it was a bad and ugly system, and it, I didn't like the way that it worked in Make Davy, but I did it because Esperanto did it. The main issue here, the reason that these choices made it a bad conling is not because they're bad choices in and of themselves. The reason is that the only goal that this language had left was to be a personal language. That is, it was to be a language that I liked for me, myself, that I was going to use. And I was making choices that I didn't like for whatever reason. Some reason that I thought like, oh, I should do this with my language rather than I want to do this with my language. And so when it did that, it basically broke the last goal of my conlang, which was to be something I liked. And it ended up becoming something that I was, you know, I kind of liked, there were parts I liked, but then there were other parts that I didn't. But I thought, oh, well, that's just the way it has to be because that's the way the language has to be, which was just a nightmare. And so as a result, the conling is a bad conling because it failed every single possible goal that either could be set out of it, out for it, or that I did personally set out for it. And that's what makes it a bad conling, not the specific choices that were made. So if you don't want to make a bad conling, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is this. Number one, define explicitly why your language is the way it is. And if your language is, for example, it's just the way it is because that's the way you like it, then say that at the very beginning and just do it. That's the next step. Number two, stick to it. In other words, once you have the purpose for your language defined, stick to it. Don't do the thing where it's like, all right, this language is just going to be the way I want it. And then you read about something in a linguistics textbook and say, oh, oh, languages are only supposed to do this if they have X, Y, and Z. And so you change it in your language, even if you don't like it. Don't do that if your goal is a personal language. Do that if your goal is a naturalistic language and there seems to be a really, really good reason to do so. But don't do it if it's just a personal language. Uh, in that case, just do what you like. And then the final step after you've done this, you've uh, defined what your language is supposed to be and you're sticking to it as you're creating it. Uh, the last thing is don't present it as something that it's not. This is something that a lot of conlingers, especially ones that found language creation on their own like me, would do. That is, we created our very first language and we have no idea why, we just think it, it exists. And we think that therefore it's the best language ever. And so then when you start meeting other people who are creating languages, maybe you're creating naturalistic languages, maybe fictional languages, or, or doing something that is different from what you're doing, you try to kind of like shoehorn it into one of these categories and say, oh yeah, like, you know, this is actually a really good naturalistic language because of this, this, and this, and then ignore all this other stuff. It's like, no, no, no. It's not a good naturalistic language because it wasn't trying to be. You weren't trying to make it that, you were trying to do something else with it. So just be true to the language, keep it uh, in the spirit of what it was that you created it for, or completely change it or go on to a new project. Don't try to say it's something that it's not. And that's it for this episode. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer on the show, leave a note in the comments or send an email to djpquery at gmail.com. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.